Providing access to sanitation for the global population is a basic need that must be urgently addressed. Currently, 1 in 10 children die from diarrheal-related diseases, which is more than from AIDS, malaria and measles combined. In urban areas of sub-Saharan Africa, the majority of toilets are not connected to a sewer. Instead, they're connected to some form of on-site storage for excreta, such as pit latrines and septic tanks. The accumulated excreta and wastewater is referred to as fecal sludge. Worldwide, 2.7 billion people currently rely on different types of on-site sanitation technologies. If managed properly, on-site sanitation technologies can provide adequate access to sanitation and are more affordable than conventional sewer-based solutions that are energy and resource intensive. However, in poor urban areas, toilets are often shared by too many people, making maintenance difficult. This results in filthy and disgusting conditions, which obviously do not provide adequate sanitation or health protection. Typically, there is also no management in place for the fecal sludge that accumulates, and this results in it being directly dumped into the urban environment, with further human and environmental health implications. Adequate sanitation can only be fulfilled with management of the entire service chain, including safe access to clean toilets, collection and transport of accumulated fecal sludge, followed by treatment and some form of safe end use or disposal. SANDEC, which is the Department of Water and Sanitation in developing countries at AAVOG, we're working on developing solutions for sanitation and fecal sludge management. We work together with NADEL, which is the Center for Development and Cooperation at ETH, and we both belong to the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. To translate our research into policy and practice, we partner with the public and private sector and are engaged in capacity building. The Urban Affordable Clean Toilets, or UACT project led by Nadel, starts at the beginning of the sanitation service chain with access to clean toilets. The goal of the UACT project is to increase access to sustainable sanitation through developing innovative solutions for affordable and functioning on-site sanitation technologies. UACT is taking place in Kampala, Uganda, where in poor areas, 84% of the households rely on shared toilets, such as the one shown here. These toilets are used on average by 25 people each, but sometimes by up to 500 people each. When toilets are overused, it is less likely that they are kept clean. This results in people stopping to use them and resorting to open defecation. Considering cleanliness, UACT research has identified that up to four households can actually share a toilet while maintaining it in an acceptably clean and functional manner, and thereby provide affordable and adequate sanitation. Inadequate toilet facilities are a fact of life in informal or illegal settlements. These settlements are not recognized by the government, which therefore does not provide services. In such areas in Kampala, 70% of the people rent their housing from landlords and do not have the right to construct their own toilets. This means that only 5% of tenants have access to private toilets. Toilets are also very expensive to construct. The cost of one pit latrine is around 750 US dollars, which is about 45% of a household's annual income. Imagine if your entire household had to pay half their annual income just for a toilet. The Fecal Management Enterprises, or FAME project, led by Sandek, is taking place in Dakar, Senegal, Accra, Ghana, and Kampala, Uganda, and starts where UACT leaves off, with the accumulated fecal sludge in on-site sanitation technologies. The goal of the FAME project is to increase sustainable access to sanitation through resource recovery from fecal sludge which could provide revenue to improve collection, transport and treatment services. Many households cannot afford to have fecal sludge collected and removed once on-site technologies become full. For example, in poor areas of Kampala, this costs between 23 and 46 US dollars, 
which is 15 to 35 percent of an entire household's monthly income. Even if households can afford the collection service, the toilets are often located down narrow pathways and are not accessible to vacuum trucks. As a result, manual laborers are hired to remove fecal sludge with shovels and buckets, sometimes even getting inside the on-site technology to dig out the sludge. Commonly, manual laborers do not have access to motorized transport, and they need to carry or push the fecal sludge away. As shown here, this results in fecal sludge being illegally dumped either right next to the house or into drainage canals or water bodies, contaminating the environment with excreta. If vacuum trucks can access the toilets, they use hoses to vacuum the fecal sludge into trucks. The UACT toilets are designed to increase access to collection through their design. UACT has designed and constructed 156 uh, shared improved latrines. These latrines are spread all over the city in about 35 slums. These toilets consist of a, pit, a holding tank of about 6 cubic meters, which is fully aligned from the bottom. It is lined so as to prevent groundwater pollution because most of the low-income areas in Kampala are situated in areas with a high water table and therefore toilets which are not lined contaminate groundwater directly. We have given these toilets additional features to facilitate the emptying. For example, on the side, we have got um, an access point which is covered by a brick that can be easily removed whenever the toilet fills and needs to be emptied. But the toilet structure standing over here has been there for about two years. And in a period of two years, it has been emptied about three times. And this emptying has not affected the integrity of the structure. And we are very sure that it can be used several times uh, for a long time, as long as it is emptied as and when it fills. Another way to increase access to collection is to reduce fees at the household level. Households rely on collection and transport companies, which charge high fees because they also incur many expenses. If the profitability of companies could be increased, the fees of the households could be reduced. The collection and treatment of fecal sludge is complicated by the high variability of its characteristics. For example, fecal sludge from septic tanks that consists of washing, cleaning and cooking water, in addition to excreta, is very dilute. Fecal sludge from pit latrines tends to be much thicker, while fecal sludge from public toilets with a high number of users is collected frequently and so is less stabilized. The sludge often contains hygienic products, batteries, bottles, household waste and garbage, which can clog the hoses and damage pumps. And because fecal sludge is mostly water, and water is heavy, it's expensive to transport. Vacuum truck drivers frequently get stuck in congested traffic, as shown here in Dakar. And long lines can form at discharge locations. There are also not enough legal discharge locations or treatment facilities, and drivers must pay a fee to discharge. Because of these reasons and the costs, trucks often resort to dumping untreated fecal sludge directly into urban environments. If these fees were reduced or eliminated, could the savings be passed on to households, resulting in a lower fee? And would this increase the amount of fecal sludge that is delivered to treatment plants, reducing the dumping of untreated fecal sludge into the urban environment? Fecal sludge is high in organic matter and nutrients. One way discharge fees could be reduced is if the treatment plant operators could offset treatment costs by generating revenue from resource recovery of the energy, nutrients and water from fecal sludge. The FAME project identified that there is currently only very limited use of fecal sludge as a soil amendment in agriculture and horticulture and that the market for resource recovery is largely untapped. Even if treated, most fecal sludge is presently just landfilled or dumped. 
Fame also found that in addition to use as a soil amendment, fecal sludge has other potential end uses. These are as a solid industrial fuel, biogas from anaerobic digestion, protein for animal feed from larvae used in treatment. The market demand for different end products varies greatly among locations based on such factors as the availability of competing products, local industries and their needs, and user perceptions. Fecal sludge treatment should be designed to meet the demands of local markets so that the end products produce the highest possible revenue. This also ensures that treatment plants are not over-designed, wasting financial resources, or under-designed, risking public or environmental health. For example, if the end use of fecal sludge is combustion as a fuel, pathogen reduction is much less important than it is when the end use is a soil amendment in food production but reducing moisture content is a much more important treatment goal. The FAME project focused on large-scale markets such as industrial fuel to ensure reliable and consistent demand and revenue. In Europe and the United States, sludge from wastewater treatment is already co-incinerated in cement industries. FAME research found that if this technology could be transferred to fecal sludge to meet the energy demand of industries in sub-Saharan Africa, it could generate much revenue as an alternative fuel. Fame also demonstrated that the calorific value of fecal sludge, which is a measure of its fuel potential, is comparable to other biofuels that are currently being used. And it found that the revenues from this end use could be significantly greater than its use as a soil conditioner. Dried fecal sludge has not yet been used as an industrial fuel. Prior to uptake by industries, pilot-scale implementations were needed to demonstrate the feasibility of fecal sludge as a fuel to industries. To address this, the FAME project designed and constructed pilot-scale kilns for brick production in Kampala and waste oil regeneration in Dakar. In both kilns, the temperatures achieved by using dried fecal sludge met industries' requirements. In the brick kiln, a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius could be maintained, and the strength of bricks fired with dried fecal sludge was similar to those produced by brick factories. Industries have expressed great interest in this alternative fuel if there is adequate availability. To sell treated fecal sludge as a solid fuel to industries requires drying the sludge to around 90% dryness. Given its low solid content, cost-effective drying methods have to be developed to meet the needs of industries. FAME researched how to improve the effectiveness of drying beds. And in Dakar, we've experimented with turning the sludge and with greenhouses to decrease drying time. And both have reduced it. Turning the sludge reduces the drying time by around 20%. This increases treatment capacities at existing treatment plants, but also new plants need less drying space. The research findings of UACT and FAME together have identified innovative solutions to increase access to sanitation at the household and community level. Shared sanitation facilities can provide adequate sanitation if the maximum number of households is set to ensure clean and usable toilets. Fecal sludge can be readily collected from on-site technologies if they are appropriately designed. Affordability of household level services could be increased through revenues from resource recovery and designing fecal sludge treatment to meet the specific local market demand could maximize these revenues. To ensure uptake of these research results, sustainable business models and fee structures need to be developed, and governments need to acknowledge the importance of fecal sludge management. Our ongoing research focuses on the development of innovative solutions throughout the entire sanitation service chain to identify and meet market demands of fecal sludge treatment end products and provide access to adequate sanitation. We hope people will start to consider the revenue generating potential of resource recovery from fecal sludge. 
Instead of only considering fecal sludge as a waste stream that needs to be managed, it can be viewed as an opportunity to contribute to a financially sustainable sanitation service chain. Wake up, good morning. This is the Good morning. I will be so 